Cheers. Hi, Felix. Hi, Vicky. How are you? I'm so happy to see you. See you too. And it's been a few years and life has changed quite a bit. Oh are you, ha, are you, um, have you been, what were you doing when COVID hit? What were you in the middle of something? Were you relaxing? I was, uh, I was in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and I had just, I want to say I just finished the, the third, no? Yeah, yeah. I had just finished the third season of, uh, of Ozark. Uh, and, and then, and then had come back from, went from, from Georgia to Vancouver to work on a different show. And then we're right. back in LA and then things started to get crazy uh, in LA. Yeah. So I was living in LA when it happened, when it hit. And right. Then, and then, uh, and then quickly realized I, I, I didn't want to be there. Oh, I oh so you traveled specifically where I was living. Okay. okay. And so did you travel during COVID? I didn't. I didn't travel uh uh during the the beginning of it, like right at the peak of it. I, right. it wasn't about travel. It was about finding a place where I could feel safe. I was in a very cluttered living environment when the pandemic first started. Right. So I saw a, a space that was a little bit fear. So I went for I went from from Marina del Rey to uh, San Pedro. Uh, and then I moved to San Pedro where it was a little bit more space. It was a little bit distant. It was not so congested. Right. Because my instinct was just to be like, try to get as much distance and, and, and solitary from people, you know? Uh, so that's what I did. And then were, from there, yeah. Were you at all, I'm COVID, cra I'm COVID crazy and the people who watch my show are COVID crazy. Were you, were you COVID nervous, anxious? Were, uh, how I, 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 I'm very frank with you, Vicky. I thought it was going to kill me. Yeah, I well, swore that it was going to kill me. I was fully, I, I had almost resolved myself that, that I was going to lose my life to this thing. Wow. That's how, that's how, that's how. And 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 I and I and I say it, you know, publicly with you now in a way that that is that is liberating, uh, because clearly it hasn't. But but um, at least not yet. <laughs> but, no. but, uh, but it uh, it 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 was not the it was not the reaction that I was hoping that I would have. I I I've always prided myself on someone who, when you know the excuse the French, when the shit hits the fan, I step right. up. Right. And, and when this thing hit, I actually retreated inward. I didn't step up and go, I'm, I'll lead this charge. I'll protect everyone. I went the other way. And I'm not saying that I went the other way and that I said every man for themselves. I just, right. I just crumbled in. I crumbled in. I thought, how could this? And I couldn't. So I had to give myself that permission and I didn't at the beginning at the be at the beginning I was very hard on myself and like I said I was very panicked about it and paranoid about it and I, I don't know how many pairs of shoes I, I ruined with alcohol and spray and this that and the other <laughs> like I don't know I must have ingested like a, a seven gallons of alcohol uh, rubbing alcohol because of all of the groceries <laughs> like all that stuff I, I, I went I, I did and, and it, you know and and it's taken a little <laughs> while to actually be okay with saying that I wish I would have, I wish, I was hoping that my reaction would be Superman-like and it wasn't, it was, it was more uh, it just panic. Pandemic know? is a terrifying thing. It's not it's something we've lived through in our lifetime. Yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. So how, how yeah. were you able to, cause you've done a lot of filming since, sure, how sure. were you able, at what point were you able to, let go of that and move back in the world? Uh, three things happened. Yeah. One was I found, I, I, I found a way to, to educate myself about what was going on, right? So, so, that, so that I, I didn't, I wasn't floating in this, I don't know world. Right. What was happening. I was like, I got up and literally in the middle of the night, I got up in the middle of the night. I thought, okay. And I pulled out my laptop and I was like, I'm going to read every single 
effing thing that I could read about what this is and what how is it from all perspectives. Not yeah, but like, that you know, scared me even more. That didn't scare you all the more. No, it didn't because what it did was for me to go, okay, I, I have to, the the thing that is the 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 thing that is making me fear the most is the right. Unknown is the unknown of it. Okay. I was like, so let me just try and learn and see if maybe that in and of itself will give me a, a thing. And then right. when I started to learn that there are, that what this is, is something that is not only uh, normal in, and, right. I, and, and I don't, I don't mean to trivialize it. I mean, like in, in China and Japan, they, they've been living like this for the mask life is a, is a thing in, in right. China. Right, right. In Asia, and right. so you're like, okay, well, is that what they're talking about? Great. So it is something where you can do something about it, and that's when I was like, okay, I started to build a little bit more strength and more confidence and more bravery toward uh, trying to trying to grapple with it. So right. that's sort of that sort of started it. Okay. That started it. And then, uh, at what point was this, Felix? Like this was like I'd say maybe a year or oh, oh, six months or eight months into the beginning of it. Okay. Know? But it's before it was before there were vaccines and stuff. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so, and so that happened. And then, then the talk of vaccines started coming out and I started to learn about what that mean and what, 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 what does that mean in, in regards to the historical element of vaccinations and protection and CDC and this, that, and the other thing. Like I started to be like, oh, okay. So that I, I learned again, cause you don't, you know, these aren't the things you learn in school when you're growing up, but I learned and taught myself during the beginning of the pandemic that at one point the flu killed millions until they figured out a way to right. control it, right. to vaccinate, to do it other things that we now take a pill for or you know have treatment for whatever we're taking people's lives and so I was like okay so this is this is something that has a historical context right that I can again start to build my confidence around trying to grab myself around this historical knowledge of it and and that kind of thing but it didn't come without a price like I I stopped talking to people I stopped the, the thing that that the thing that hurt me the most is that I started to become angry with people. I You're not the only one. <laughs> with people, you know, because 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 it started to challenge my my. The, the, I was my mother raised me by you know with a couple of mottos, and one of them was "You love everyone, and so they give you reason not to." Mm -hmm. And That's during great. this thing, during this thing, people started giving me reason not to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, "Why? It, it, it's selfless and selfish are two different things." And 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 I don't particularly care to have my face covered at all, but. But if that's gonna help, man, then everybody put one on. Like, like just this is like, what is the bucket? The 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 water's in the boat, so get the bucket. Like, you know, like let's work together. And 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 I started to, I started to be a little. I got a little angry with uh, with us as humans. <laughs> you know, I got a little disappointed in us. Did uh, you use your yeah. social media platforms to? Were you? No, no. I'm not uh -huh. a social media person. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm on, I'm on Instagram because I like photos. I like photographs, but, 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 uh, but that's really the only thing I didn't, I didn't feel, I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel the need to try and uh, yell at people or, or mm -hmm. try to change their minds or so on and mm -hmm. so forth because I was again, grappling with it on my own. Right. Uh, right. Just, I just realized, oh, wow, this is, this is, and this is, you know, two years ago. So at 48, I lost what people would consider their innocence. I lost it at 48 with this pandemic because my mm -hmm. innocence was always, again, I love everyone until they give me reason not to. And so, and so and it, it wasn't until this thing started that I, I started to get reason to go, you really are going to behave that way. And it's, this is, we're all in it together. We're all the same. We're all the same. So so anyway, so that so that sort of was the was the was the thing for me was to just educate myself, get the information in, use it to the best of my ability to help calm the the anxiety, the fear of the unknown, the uh, this 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 concept where you where you you just you know you it's over it's it's a thing or it's over your shoulder. No, you got to sort of 
It isn't. Okay, so how did you do that, Phil? Because I, all right, yeah. I understand that you educated yourself, but if yeah. like I'm, I, I'm still very, very cautious. I haven't been sure. on a plane. I, you sure. know, I, I eat only outdoors at restaurants. Sure. I still sure. wear a mask everywhere. How sure. did you? How did you? How did you take those first steps? I know you got educated, but how did yeah. you actually? Because it's a different thing from here yeah. to here. How did you sure. physically move back? What was the first thing you started to do to acclimate yourself back into the world? I got I got a job as an actor. Aha. Okay. I got a job as an actor and 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 you're like, oh, wait, are you serious? People are getting laid off right, left, and center. People are 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 uh uh not knowing where they're gonna pay their rent from. The their the loans are uh, through the roof and, and right. I was like, uh, wait, I was just offered a job. It was a voiceover job. Uh huh. It was a voiceover job, and I thought, I, I, I can't, I can't not do it. Uh, I also, ironically enough, believed wholeheartedly in the project, but, but, uh, but I, but I was asked to do a voiceover for a, a, a PBS documentary, and and the guy was gonna, the the one who directed it and created it was gonna come. He said, "I'm flying to your house." <laughs> To, to record your voiceover. And I thought, wow, here's an interaction. This is an interaction. And we were, and, and I tried very hard to not be where, where everyone has been, which is this, that's uncomfortable conversation of, do you have COVID or you not? Do you believe in masks? Do you not? Are you, are you going to get a bit? Right. Well, that's a very uncomfortable conversation that we're right. forced to have. Right. Some people are a little bit better at it excuse me, than others, but but we're all still at that place. We're like, sure, I'd love to have dinner. <laughs> I have an antigen test. Like, it's an awkward <laughs> thing, right? It's an awkward. Chelsea Handler has this fantastic bit about it when she talks about, like, now she's realizing how she sleeps with, with people. She sleeps with them because she they'll do a test, and then in they, in the 15 minutes that you're waiting for the antigen test to, to show its results, you have a conversation with that person, and if you like them by the end of those 15 minutes, they're negative. If you don't <laughs> like them, then they're positive, and that's it. But uh, this is great. But, but I did. I got so he and 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 I was like, well, what are you going to do? And he's like, well, I I don't want you to get sick. I don't want to get sick. We don't know each other that well. So I will stand outside. I will run the cables from the outside of your house through a window or door into your closet where you will be by yourself. So and he wow. came, yeah. And he came in with like a mask that would like just <laughs> It would literally make like any any chemical warfare person <laughs> proud. Like it was just this thing, <laughs> and like and uh, and he did. And I was like, okay, so that that went away. And I was like, I'm, you know, I'm speaking metaphorically, but I was like that he we did this job. He's no longer here. I'm still alive, right? And so and so I was like, okay, so that was the first true step of going uh, we're going to need to figure out how to live with this alongside this okay but that was really safe yeah. so now are you going to grocery stores at this time are you going out in the world what are you doing at, at that time no right at that time no. i was having everything delivered right uh i was uh uh the only the only time i went out was to a trader joe's and that was because they were only letting 25 people in at a time. Remember that? Or like yeah. everyone was waiting in line and whatever. And uh, or I would try to catch it like in the last 30 minutes before they close so that I could just be in and out. Like, so yes, I was doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then and then uh, and then the then right around that time the the the, the talk of vaccine started and the talk of of of, uh, of there's a way to protect ourselves in some way. There's a very specific thing that is happening. And the, the more specificity I got, the more I felt uh, comfortable um, that. Also, I had a couple of friends who contracted it early mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and didn't die. And so that helps you feel like, Trust okay, it. I'm not gonna die. There's something, yeah, there's something about, okay, they, they survived it, fortunately, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, but but starting to see certain things, you know what I mean? It's kind of like when you go like this and all of a sudden you go and you open your eyes just a little bit and you go, oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. Okay. You know, that kind of feeling. Um, but but ultimately at the end of the day, too, I had to I had to realize, I had to figure out how to uh, 
They wanted it. They wanted to keep. They figured out a way to keep working. Okay, so how did you do that? So, what was the first job that you had to leave your home? That they didn't come with the mask to your house. That yeah. you had to leave your home, maybe travel. I'm guessing. Yeah. How, yeah. How, how did you do? It? Were you vaccinated f- when that happened? No, it was no. the fourth season of Ozark. Oh God! It was the beginning. We 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 were all told uh, uh, we're doing it. And you we can't are, turn that down. That ain't happening. Yeah, I was like, I couldn't do that. No uh, way. Didn't think it was going to happen. I really didn't. So I had already resolved myself to go, okay, well, that's what it is. But then the call came in and, uh, and, and talk was there. And I spoke to some of the actors on the show and, and they were explaining what they were going to do and what their game plan was. And so uh, I, 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 that was the first endeavor. And I, I, I'm, I'm truly grateful to my partner who was like, she's, Lisa's an Albanian. She's from Australia. Like, they're just like, adventure mate like just adventure. <laughs> like hey we'll just make an adventure out of it so we drove uh, oh good okay but you had to stop at gas stations and maybe hotels you had a yes yes, yes. so how was that when you like checked into the first hotel and you gotta breathe shared air and do it was <laughs> intense it was intense. There's a couple of things that I think were 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 key, and 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 they I should point them out. One is we were with Jackie Robinson, so so we had a dog, so we had to choose hotels that were dog friendly hotels. Right. So there's this line of hotels called La Quinta Inns, and they were all like doesn't matter any right. kind of dog, whatever. So that that helped uh, narrow the. Yeah, the narrow the choices and narrow all of that stuff. One, two. At that point, too, there was there were uh, um, COVID uh, restrictions and COVID uh, uh, protocols in place at hotels. Right. So, so we were very quick to be like, okay, check, 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 check. Yes, they've done all the things they said they did. Right. That's that's one, two, and then three was that we were we we had Lisa and I had become like master disinfectants at that point like we were just like like we were masters at it so every hotel that we stayed in we were just like all right here's a good you stay in the car that's right it's definitely i stay in the car with the dog you go in you put the bags down great you come back in we swap out here's another mask like we were like covid Rambo's. <laughs> so so that that really helped that that really helped uh and 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 what also helped was the fact that i knew that i was i knew that i was lucky vicky i knew that i was that i had that i had been uh the universe had chosen for me to to i, I was just lucky i got a job i got a job during a pandemic to act I was like, I can't, I gotta, I gotta do whatever I gotta do to, to the universe is saying we're giving. Had three aired yet when you were, three had, wait, three had aired. Yeah. But the first part of, see, this was so, doing the first part of four. You did four together, I get, correct. I gather. Right, we okay. Four. Yeah, we did four. So together. you already knew the, so you'd already shot that, you'd already, the air, the shot. The scene that changed the world had already aired when that, this was that had, that had already aired. So you but, already well, knew the, the impact irony, that here's you Here's the had. irony. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but here's the irony, Vicky. We were all wearing masks. The entire world was wearing a mask. Right. So uh, I got away with walking around in public very Oh, so quickly. people didn't know you. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. So you, so little children didn't go running away from you in no, the street. Nobody, no, completely not. And because there was so much time in between when I actually had done that and right. and and when we had to travel for for the fourth season, that that my hair was longer. I literally my hair was down to like there it was I just it didn't look like this guy at all. Uh, so I so it was safe. I was safe in, in the in the recognition realm or whatever. I also thought it was ironic. I was having a conversation with my dad about it. He's like, isn't it funny? You've been working 27 years to be recognized, and then when you finally get a job that might recognize you, you gotta wear a mask during it. And I was like, that's life, Pop. But, uh, but yeah, that's, so that's kind of hysterical. The, the, yeah. the role that brings you more 
fame than well, anything and you're the hiding net, the net <laughs> in netflix is a is a very big net that gets cast. oh gosh so, yeah we, i mean that was the that was the most impactful season of a show i mean and and still this i mean the fact that i didn't know we were going to have to wait for the second part of the season when i started season four yeah and about two episodes away i was like how are they going to finish this and my son said they're not it's coming and i'm like what okay. and like we all had to wait all this time like the fact that it's friday i can't like, i think the whole world is just going to be sitting in front of netflix at midnight at the stroke of midnight on friday you know to i also it is worth and we've all we've all at one point or another on the cast have all acknowledged this publicly that that we were lucky in so much that during the pandemic we had we had a sequestered audience we had right we were everybody everybody was, caught up on uh, anybody who watched, hadn't seen it did it hadn't seen it like we just we had we had everyone in the theater <laughs> yes. and the doors were locked <laughs> like so <laughs> whether you you know but I mean, again it's fine it, it's it, I, I just I always want to acknowledge that that there is also that that I that that again serendipitous irony that 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 people couldn't leave their house. And so they had to watch TV and the, the things, one of the things they had an option to watch was our show, so. Okay, so now, so you come together, you get there, you get, yeah. you, and what is that like now? I know they're testing you like crazy, Inside. right? You're, yeah. you're getting, and, yeah. and you uh, have the person who's holding your mask, who's holding your shield, who's doing all, all of that, it. right? All of it, all of it, all of it. Uh, uh, yes, we were, we were, we were bubbled. I, the first, the first and only place that I rented while here in Georgia was the back of a, uh, a house, uh, had a, a guest house, like a cottage house, mm -hmm. carriage house, cottage house, and, and, and they had converted it. And so that was, so I was staying in the back, in the forest, in a hut, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there was no, there was no contact with the outside world at all. Uh -huh. um, so that helped. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we were tested a lot. Uh, we were also monitored and, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but like mm -hmm. we were monitored, meaning if we were going to go outside, we had to let somebody in production know that we were going to go to the restaurant with, or to, or to, uh, to pick up food or to go to a supermarket. We were in communication constantly. Uh -huh. they, spent, they spent a lot of time and money and effort to try and keep the production as safe as possible. Did it stay safe? Did anybody get COVID oh, while yeah, you were shooting? Sure. Yeah, we shut down. We shut down maybe, maybe five or six times. I could be wrong. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And the shutdowns were tough because they were like ten days. Boom, everything stopped for ten days. Tracing. Uh, uh, was it was it cast or crew or both? All of it. All of all it, of it across the board. That had to be like terrifying. Oh god. It's, it's tricky. Yeah, it's tricky, and we didn't know, and we were. The first day on set, everyone was trying to be like, uh, at least in my experience, everybody was trying to be helpful and 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 communicative and and uh, 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 trusting and so on and so forth. But but at the same time, not everyone, like I was saying earlier, not everyone thinks the same way. And, and right. So w w what would have possibly helped the world in general is we all shifted our mindset to one particular way of thinking that would have helped it completely along. But because we are human and we all have this thing called free will and so on and so forth, everyone was feeling different about it. Some, you know, they call it now, what do they call it now? The, your, your risk factor or whatever your risk factor is, right? Some people's risk factor was higher than others, you know? Right. Like, I'm going out tonight or I'm going to have a barbecue this weekend with my family, or whatever, you know? Right. And, you can't stop them from doing that but but that's what so there were times when when people would get would te test positive and then we'd have to adjust and and shut down and wait and push and wait and push and wait and i think i want to say maybe maybe 30 maybe a month to a month and a half possibly even more of time was added for the stoppages and stuff while we were shooting and what was it like felix when you shot your first scene and you had to take your mask off and act with another actor in yeah. close proximity. I mean, did, yeah. were you able to be present in the moment? Were you thinking about that or were you so, able to? Okay. So you've seen the first part, correct? I have. I have. 
hopefully everyone will. It's not a spoiler if they haven't, and I'm sorry because it's already been out for a while. That's true. I'm, I'm sure opening, everybody has. Yeah, the <laughs> opening scene. Is, this is a spoiler alert. So, but the opening scene of the fourth season is mm -hmm. a baptismal party that my character Omar Navarro throws. Right. Oh Child. God! And there's so many people. Yeah. 175 extras on day one. Oh my God! Oh my God! I can't. I can't even. I can't so, even. So all of this stuff that I had <laughs> built up, this confidence, this thing, this, I'm learning about what's going on. I'm giving myself, and then I show up and there's 175 oh. human beings in this scene. All there to quote unquote, celebrate my son and do nothing. So I showed up and I was like, all right, here we go. Like, so here we go. And there were very, again, there were very, very, there weren't like, y'all are on your own, whatever, we're shooting this. At, to the complete opposite, to the contrary, it was like, you're staying right here. You don't move from this chair. There's, there's, a, there's a thing around you. You got five people going, no, 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 don't get close to him. He's got to be over. Every, bullhorns, masks on everyone, masks on everyone, like in between takes, like full, felt a little bit like I was in a war zone. Wow. You know, while shooting, while doing a scene. Um, now, Felix, does this yeah. impact you when you're, per, when you're acting, when you're Absolutely. doing, I mean, of course it does. Sure, sure it does. And I, and I kind of felt, uh, I felt like, there, I, again, no references is a very dangerous thing as an actor. If you don't have a reference for what you're about to do in the scene, you're, you're, you're up Shit's Creek with no paddle. So, so. So, so I had to figure out a way to find references for what was happening in this scene with this big party and what was going through my mind and so on and so forth. And I just allowed myself to go, okay, well, I'm not safe wherever I am as the character, right? the head of this cartel. I'm right. not safe wherever I go. I'm not going to hide that. I won't ah. try and hide that as the actor. I'm going to use that as the character and make sure that I'm looking around and I'm making sure that no one looks fishy and that everybody who's here, I've actually physically invited. And, and I just pushed it, pushed it wow. in the scene. But at the same time, I also, uh, as soon as they call cut, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get COVID? No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't, I haven't, uh, and I have, I've, I don't want to say, no, it's not right to say it's, I've been playing Russian roulette because it's not like I've actually been pulling the trigger. Right. But, but I, I've, Lisa got it. She the did. morning, the morning she got it, we were, we were in bed kissing. Okay. Now, wait a minute. That did she get it off. after traveling or yeah, on a yeah, plane? Exactly. Yeah, she got a she got a job in Los Angeles. We were in New York, and uh, and she flew to to Los Angeles to do the job. Everybody was safe. She was safe. They were all testing. Everybody was testing, and then and then she got on a plane. And so uh, uh, she she firmly believes that she contracted it on the plane. Uh, was and, it post vaccination? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was and boosted. And boosted. Yeah, so, so she, she I the, assume she didn't get stuff. a horrible. Now she said she had, she said she had like allergies. She said, I feel like I have allergies. And I was like, okay, great. I still got her an Airbnb and so on. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Somewhere else. <laughs> she was like, I was being kicked out. I was like, yes. She's like, you're treating me like I have the, 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 the cooties. And I was you like, do. you do. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. No, but and, it was actually good. It was good because I was still working and I, and I, I really wanted to make sure that I didn't, I, I, didn't, I, I really, no one wants to be, but I truly, truly did not want to be the dude who, who shut production down. So I, right. so yeah, so we, so we did that. So, but that, I mean, that's what I mean like that. And then a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago or something, she had four girlfriends over all who had already had COVID who were all boosted, vaccinated. We, I made them lunch. They sat around at my kitchen table for four hours. We were shooting the shit. That night, one of them calls me and says, I'm positive. And I was like, okay, I got it then. I got it. I got it. Like, 
didn't test positive. Uh, you know, this has happened to me three times know. also. And I, this is weird, but I just read this thing in the Times yesterday that said that they believe that most Americans, most have had COVID over 60 something percent. And I believe there are some of us who maybe have a natural immunity. I don't know why, but be. I've, I've kissed somebody who had it and been right, you know, and all of that. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I also, I also don't put it past us to have had it and not known it. And that that's probably, I've, well, I think I've had it 60 times already. So yeah. I, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> had it and have not known it and then been That's like possible. you know at the very beginning i remember losing a losing my chase buds at the very very beginning really yeah but then i did a a, a, a what do you call it a oh yeah it? one of those antigen the, the, the no, the, no yeah the one that the whatever that, that tells is. you if you right. have antibody right. the antibody, antibody right right and i didn't have the antibody so right. me either yeah so i don't know i don't know but 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 it was uh it has been it has been uh, something to that I have that I I literally have had that I was at the 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 a function for 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 Ozark just ten days ago. I've and, seen you at things, no mask, yeah. next to other people. Yeah. Yeah. So how ha how 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 do you do that? Have you had your second booster? I'm I'm yeah I'm, I'm actually going to do it I think tomorrow. Lots of Fiji water. I'm, I'm swearing this is the secret. You drink Fiji water, which has electrolytes. You uh -huh. drink at like a quart of it before you have the, the booster uh -huh. and you drink it all day after and you don't get reaction. You, it like, really works. Out. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, I was actually waiting. I was, I've been in New York for the last uh, th three weeks and, and, uh, and then I was going to get in New York, but it was it's difficult to get an appointment in New York. So I waited mm -hmm. to come back to Georgia. Okay, so but now New York, they, they can't say that things are spiking because everybody's taking home tests. So they yeah. have no idea how many people have it. But one of our viewers tonight, my good friend, Anne has it right now. And she feels like she got hit by a truck and yeah. she's vaccinated and boosted. And I mean, it's, it can be, it can still be not a it's fun thing. Annoying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and scary still, scary still, you know. So uh, how was flying now that they've taken the mask mandate away? How do you feel about getting on a plane? You're okay? If I was on a plane this morning, I kept my mask on. Mm -hmm. I kept my mask on the whole time. I took, a, I flew, I flew this, this very morning. And, uh, and I was like, cool, y'all can do what you got, but I'm keeping my mask on because I still believe that, you should protect yourself. And so, do you feel okay? Are you nervous when you are flying? Do you are you um, over it? Do you feel like I, you're no, okay? I, I will say I'm not nervous, but I will say I notice when someone sneezes or coughs a little bit more than I did before. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> oh so, hell yeah. That's a, yeah. And you just give the look, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. Let's see how yeah. long we keep doing it for or or, or you know. Yeah, that kind of thing. So I'm aware, but I'm not. But I, I kind of, again, I've kind of, I've kind of, with time and with and with uh, the experiences that I've had, uh, again, watching people get it and and go through it, and then and not have it, or watching their children get it and go through it, and them not being too bad with it, and so on and so forth. I feel like we're at least right now, we're at a place where it's. There is a way to 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 live with it. Okay, so when you go to like these functions and stuff, yeah. you're moving yeah. about a room with a lot of people. You're yeah. not ma you're not masked, and you're yeah. able to like feel like a regular person in regular life. And yes, you're back to have, kind I of. Do have, I do have an internal. I have an internal alarm that has created itself too, Vicky. I'm not going to lie. So so you know that they always say like the thing that we were always following while we were shooting is like. You are considered a close contact if you were within six feet of someone and had conversations with them for more than 15 minutes. Right. So that uh, subliminally and subconsciously, that sort of set an alarm in my body from time to time. So if you if you actually were like if you were a fly on the wall, watch me at that party, you'd probably see that I didn't stay long with more than 15 minutes for anybody I was having a conversation with moving around, staying in the open spaces uh 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 doing yeah doing those 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 sorts of sorts of things but it is it is still scary yeah I, i'm still i'm still i'm still uh i'm still aware i'm still aware that there's a lot of people 
I went to a Yankee game the other day. Oh my God, how do you do it? Yeah. It's outdoors. it's outdoors. We're all outdoors. But when I go to the bathroom, I put my mask on. Right. When I go to the concession stand and there's a, a cl- cluster of people together, I'll put my mask on. Mm-hmm. You know, but then I'm sitting in my seat and it's outside or whatever, or, you know, or I don't sit in my seat because there's 20 other people around me. I, I buy my ticket, of course, but then I'm just in the stadium at a, a by a flagpole or by the, you know, uh, 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 open air spaces and, and, and the sort of standing room only kind of areas Right. I still watch the game like that. But like, cause I miss it. I, I, I do miss that. I miss going mm-hmm. to concerts. I miss going to see oh, God. the Yankees play. I miss yes. that. Yes. I, uh, I, I mean, I don't miss the, I don't, I don't, well, I, I, I miss, I miss being at a bar and having a conversation with somebody. I don't miss the, 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 the danger of, of the alcohol consumption, but, mm-hmm. but I, but I do miss, I do miss conversation, you know? Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, and you can still have it. You can still have it with your mask and all of that, but, but it just felt like that was the one thing I was like, all right, let me, uh, let me give this, let me give the Yankee game a shot and see. Have you I'm gone going. to, to a concert? No, no. Um, yes, yes. But I have not, uh, I've been masked the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll say, I, I've gone to see a play, one play, a buddy of mine, Bernardo Cubria mm-hmm. did, uh, 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 one of his plays was produced in that LA recently. And so when I was there recently, I went to go see it. It was fun. It was the first play I'd seen during the pandemic probably the only person I'd ever break that rule for. He's a sweetheart and a talented writer. And so I wanted to support him. So I went, but I, you know, the whole play. Uh, and uh, yeah. And, uh, and, and so, yeah. So when I go to something like that, so, so that, and then the only, the concert I saw was recently in New York. I went to Birdland because I missed, I missed the, the, the Arturo Ferro Latin jazz band that they, 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 they play mm-hmm. every Sunday night at, at Birdland. And I miss that, miss that hard. So I went, you know, masked, uh, and then and watched. But 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 I'm starting to be okay with the mask on my face while I'm inside because that's still I still believe like that gives me a shot, a, a formidable shot of not contracting. You know, I agree. Well, you're giving me hope that maybe I can start taking a few more chances. I'm. I'm, yeah. I'm so so Felix we're going to go back in time but let's talk about this is too exciting that this is happening on Friday that Ozark is dropping and I I'm not kidding I know a lot of people that are going to be sitting at their TVs at the stroke of midnight in LA waiting for it to to just actually I think maybe it doesn't go on till like three in the morning it has to be like midnight in New York oh maybe it's not oh yeah like 9 p.m I think we get it in LA (laughs) which is even more exciting so and the, and I didn't even know that when we booked this, that it was going to be two days before it was going to drop. So I oh, know yeah. you can't yeah. talk about it, yeah, but I'm yeah. think. But what can what can you talk about in terms of this last part that is coming up? Is there anything you can tell us? I can I can say some I can say something because the boss said this, and so I can say it too because he said cool. it in an interview. Jason. Okay. Bay. Okay. He said he said if you've loved the show thus far you will love the way it ends. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Do you yeah. love the way it ends? I don't know how it ends. You and haven't I, seen, you haven't here's seen. What I do, here's what I do, Vicky. Okay. I, I, I started watching the show when I was hired to play this part. I hadn't fully watched all of it up to that point. First right. Season. So I sat down, did my homework. And a good friend was the original bad boy yeah. on there, Isai, yes. Uh-huh. Isai, totally. And so I said, all right, well, here I am. I'm going to do this. And so I better, you know, do my homework and, right. and do all the things you're supposed to do, which is to get to get to understand the tone of it, the the energy, the kind of what is the nuances, is, is there nuances or not? Is this right over, you know, the tone of the show? Right, of course. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I started watching and I quickly became a fan of the show absolutely so here's what i did yeah i started working on it uh-huh. i would get the script i would pull my scenes out so i could study them and learn them the scenes right. i was responsible for the only job you're responsible for as an actor is to the character you're playing right so i pulled those scenes had those scenes printed and worked on them as scenes mm-hmm. and didn't read the rest of the episode wow i didn't read it so that 
three wow. things happened. One, I, 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 I didn't play moments that I wasn't supposed to be playing because of somewhere subliminally, I knew that this happened and I, wow. I, that I, wow. so I pulled out any, any traps that I could have had. One, two, I'm a fan of the show. So doing that allowed for me when the, the season would drop that allowed for me to watch it. Wow. Like a fan, like a fan, wow. right? So we yeah. just watch as a fan. Two and and three the 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 joy of of being able to do a, a television show like this is that you you have uh, you have you have a, a creative ensemble right and that creative ensemble it truly was a creative ensemble this cast and what a and brilliant cast it was just so it was they it, it warms my heart to say it every time. Vicky, but they asked me what I thought. Oh. <laughs> is Jason as wonderful as I'm thinking Jason is? 100%. 100%. Mm-hmm. 100%. He, he, to me, he, he, he'd, he'd, he'd not be mad at me for saying this. He'd, he'd just, he'd, he'd think I'd be making fun of him, but I'm not. But he does define this concept of you, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Oh. And he's just, he's he's so enthusiastic about it. He's enthusiastic about how a light is supposed to light you. And what happens if we put the camera here? He's like a he's just a kid in a playground when he wow. directs. And, and that's the that you you want that. You you want that in a in a in a in a in a person who's not only a leader of your show, but he's an executive producer and he's a director. And so and he's a fellow castmate, and he's in and the he's scene with you. And, yeah. he's, and he's a castmate, and and uh, and I'll never forget. I'll never forget. There were moments where I was like, "This, this guy, he chose me, Vicky." Okay, we're gonna talk. Okay, so tell us now. How, how did that happen? How'd you get cast? I got I got an audition. I I was sitting in my in my car on on Washington Boulevard, uh, staring at the Venice Beach uh, boardwalk mm-hmm. and uh, the pier and. Uh, and I wasn't getting any, I wasn't getting the jobs I was auditioning for. This was, this was during or after SEAL team, I'm thinking? After. After, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I wasn't getting the jobs that I was auditioning for that I liked, that I wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just, I had a conversation with the universe, Vicky. I had a conversation with the universe and I said, all right, I get it. You're not giving me what I want. I will, uh, I get the message. Uh, I will then humbly take what it is that you think I should be doing. And I will do it to the best of my ability. And a couple of days later, I got the audition for this role. And, uh, and you I, manifested it. I love this. I, I believe in that. It was, and it was difficult because the road to success is not comfortable, and we have to get used to uncomfortability in order to succeed. But, but the idea is that you, you, you. I was like, here's this character that I've kind of been shying away from. The drug lord, the the mm, the mean, because, the yeah, baddie, the, all of that, right? Like I was like wow, universe, this is all right, you're challenging me here. And so I thought, how can I do this to the most humanistic level, to the most uh, relatable level of a human being that, that no matter who you are, good, bad, or indifferent, you get this guy, you understand this guy, you know this person. I have 30 questions right now. And I want to hear this yeah. because I just finished binging The Sopranos. Yeah. And F having watched it all those years ago, still yeah. as brilliant as ever. Absolutely. Your Omar kind of reminds me of a soprano wise guy, yeah. um, you know, of like a Tony that because we as as despicable as despicable as the behavior is, they're all still human. I still love them and all. And how yeah. I am empathetic with Omar. Yeah. I, I only know that I am because I know you. And right. I, so I said, okay, well, so I feel like I'm cheating because sure. I know Felix, but yeah. I know everybody feels that way. Yeah. How do you make this monster? Yeah. How do you love him so that yeah. we can? H- how do you do that? I, I, I refused to do, I, 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 refu- I, I denied myself research on Pablo Escobar, on on documentaries about drug lords and drug cartels. I denied myself that kind of research. Wow. Instead, I looked into 
self-made men who had started businesses on their own and built and built a small empire on their own with their hard work. I studied a guy who who uh, has a cheese factory in Wisconsin. Wow. Yeah. And he was, and I, I learned about this guy who started out by just asking his buddy who had cows to show him how to milk cows. And then he took that milk and made curdle. And I studied those, I studied the person who was a self-made businessman who cares a lot about his product and his business. And he has to make the best decision possible though, to allow for his business to be the best and most fruitful, most profitable business that he runs. I studied those guys. Wow. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't, I just shied away from all of the stuff. I didn't want to see photos of what George Lords were looked like. I didn't watch other television shows that, that, that used the world of it. I just denied myself that because that was part of what had happened when I said, okay, well, I got to make this guy human. If I'm going to, if I'm going to accept this job universe, because I'd said I would, and I do it to the best of my ability, I'm going to try to make them as human as possible, try to make them as relatable as possible. So I studied the everydayer. I okay, so now everyday. wait, let's go back a second. So Jason, you get a call from Jason, you're looking at the Venice Beach. Yeah, no, no, I don't get a call from, I get a call from my manager saying, you have an audition for the show. And I was like, okay. okay. And then I put myself on tape. He was directing the episode that I am introduced in. So as the director of the episode, he has a say as to who he would like to play the role. And so uh, much later on, I, uh, I think might have even been my last day on set, I, 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 I grabbed a moment when no one was watching and I leaned in and I said, I, I, I thanked him for choosing me and thanked him for, for allowing me to be a part of this process and this, and this beautiful journey. And, and he, to, to his, again, credit and his character, he said, Felix, there was absolutely no doubt in my mind when I saw your audition that you were, that you were this guy. So you don't got to thank me. I just hope that, that you've, uh, you've had a good time doing it and that, and that, and that it, uh, it brings you some kind of joy and light uh, to your, to your, both your life and your career. And so, and so, so that was nice to hear, you know, uh, um, it was nice to hear because it, because what he was saying and he had no idea he was saying was, I, I validated all of the hard work that you did to not make this guy a stereotype, to just not do it. Oh, Even so though Felix. in the writing I had to do, you know, the character does the things that he does and that's the writing and what makes it beautiful is that that's the writing. So the writing takes care of that. I just right. wanted to make sure that I wasn't putting, you know, honey on top of the icing, you know, like I just, the icing was there with the writing. So what else could I do now to allow for him to be a bit more complex, a bit more um, human? Just I mean, the scenes human. with your children and all mm -hmm. of that stuff that allowed your humanity, but then how do you turn around and do the ugliest of the ugly? Where do you pull that from? <coughs> that, that horrific... I mean, I... you go back and look at that scene. The only thing I am playing is an absolute earnest joy and, and, and humble hosting of two people who have arrived at my home. <laughs> that, that's it. Because that's really all that, that's the human part. That's the human part of that scene is that he's excited to see his children. He's missed them. He sees his baby. Here are these two people who are gonna help him make his business the best that it can be. He's ex humbly grateful and thankful that they've arrived. Wow. That's it. That's all I played in that scene. <laughs> wow. Because the writing takes care of the rest. But there were scenes when you were horrible, when you were menacing and scary and so where do you dig for that i dig i uh, my references are all about uh, there are okay so whenever i feel whenever he raised his voice mm -hmm. it's because he felt that people were being unfair to him that people were not understanding him and that misunderstood energy 
nine out of 10 times comes to a head with, with frustration. And his frustration is what you see. I like that frustration. And I do, and I can see it clearly. Some Brenda just says she loves the scene of you sitting on the jet talking with the DEA agent. You are a brilliant actor and you are. We're gonna talk about your acting. I've seen you on stage. I've seen you in my living room. We're gonna talk about, I get goosebumps thinking about it. We're gonna talk about it, but I just wanna wrap with a little more Ozark before we move on. So did you know, Ozark was already a big success when you came aboard. Did yeah. you have any idea the impact this was, how this was going to impact your career? No, mm -hmm. no, uh, no, because I didn't, I, I don't, for lack of a, I didn't do it. I don't. You do didn't it. go, oh, this is, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. No, no, no. It was fun. It was a job and I was enjoyed about it. And then, and, and. You know, truth be told, that the, it was it was uh, it was nice to be getting paid during a time when people weren't working. Period. Like mm -hmm. at that level of gratitude is like that's I don't even I I am over over the hill with gratitude for the opportunity to have gotten a job during this. So I kept that that was that was. That was the cement that kept my feet on the ground, Vicky, the mm. whole time. So I didn't, I, I, ha, I hadn't, I didn't know, I didn't know. I did start to get a sense that things were getting a, like that things were when, when, when you, when you, this is what I was talking about earlier. The net in Netflix is pretty broad. Like, right. I, I did get the sense when you start getting from time to time, and I had to stop doing it because it was a lot, but. Like when you get unsolicited messages on your Instagram from a young gentleman in Nigeria saying he loves the show and that your character is awesome, or you get a message from Istanbul, or you get a message from Paris, you get a, and you're like, this is broad, this is wide, this is worldwide, right? Uh, uh, and I was like, oh wow, that's. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. But, but, uh, but no, I didn't, I didn't, I just knew I, I was working with great people and I knew I was working with great people because, you know, you got, you, I, 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 I've seen everything she's ever done and, and I've seen her on stage as many times as I possibly can. And, and mm -hmm. so, so, so for me, working with Laura Linney wasn't, and, and we have mutual friends who, who are no longer with us and we share our mm -hmm. grief and our mourn together for them. And, and, uh, and, uh, and it just, it was just, uh, it was a really beautiful place to work. It was a really beautiful place to work. Did you, you didn't work with Julia, I don't think. You don't have no. scenes. No, what an actress. That... Oh, she's a powerhouse. Oh an my God. An absolute powerhouse. She doesn't know this, but like there were days when like I'd be wrapped for the day and then I'd look at the rest of the call sheet and see that she was shooting a scene and I'd sit in the back and watch her shoot the scene. Like I'd hang out in Video that. Village and watch the monitors while she was shooting the scene because I was like, I was like, yes, she's crazy. Oh, Did you watch crazy. Inventing Anna? I have. That's I mean, I that, that was a pretty wild character yeah. right there. But That's she, true. but she is an amazing, extraordinary actor. Fantastic. She's fantastic, and she loves to do it. She loves to do it. You gotta, you gotta, you got There's nothing more enjoyable to watch than watching someone do something they love to do. Oh, God. Right. So. So, yeah, no, it's, they're, they're all they're all fantastic. And it was just nice to, to, to be to be doing that. But but I didn't I didn't have any I didn't I didn't have any expectation. I didn't have any like, here we go. And not at all. It's just like people like the show. Cool. And that's it. But it was when I started to be uh, when I started to clock a little bit that there's maybe something going on here when when we just start getting these. In OK, so now did the third season air? During the pandemic, I don't remember now. Did it air during the pandemic? Right in the middle of it. So yeah. you you yeah. came, you literally came. I had a sequestered up. audience, huh? <laughs> like I was saying, the people were in the theater, the doors were closed, they couldn't <laughs> go anywhere but watch us. <laughs> so we're like, cool, you know, you're but there was you so whether you like it or not. <laughs> there was so much conversation. I mean, forget the press. Just on social media, there was so much conversation about yeah. Ozark, especially yeah. that the, the season finale of season three. I mean, forget True. it. It's changed television. Sure. And, and then season four starts and we're still 
in our houses. Mm-hmm. I was, I'm, most yeah, people yeah. were. Yeah. And it's all anybody can talk about. And everybody is furious that we have to wait for the second <laughs> part, you know, for the next yeah. part to drop. So, okay, so you sincerely do not know how the show is going to end. I don't, I know, I know my character, obviously I'm responsible for my character. So I know my character's arc. Uh, but, uh, but other than that, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be sitting and watching the same as y'all were on Friday. I will sit and watch it. Sure. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's exciting. It's exciting. So exciting. All yeah. right. So Felix, for those who out with us today, who don't know you, who haven't, who haven't uh, had the, the good fortune to um, have seen your work, uh, on live on stage, which um, I uh, <laughs> I am so blessed that I that I have. A- and then you came to my living room at the Pulitz, uh, you know. And <laughs> um, a lot of people have seen you do a lot of other work, and it seems to me that you usually are a good guy. You're usually like a cop, aren't you? A cop a lot? Haven't you been a cop detective, a lot? Detective, cop. Sure. I, I played a doctor once, which was kind of fun, a surgeon. Uh, but uh, but yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, and then there were. Have yeah, you early. ever played a bad guy? Bef- have you ever been a bad guy? Uh, not not to not to this, not to this uh, uh, notoriety. Like, no, not not really. I, I, I as a kid, I played like a, a, a gun runner, but but on a on on a New York undercover. Uh, but uh but uh, but no no I've done I've done mostly you know and I've done dads and I've done loving husbands and I've done you know so but 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 by but by choice Vicky by choice I was you know be, right because you didn't want to be the stereotypical I wasn't interested no New York New York New yeah. York and I lo- I never heard that until uh, yeah. you coined it New York Puerto Rican I love that New York and so. Yeah. So you you purposely avoided it, but it, of course, ironically, this will be the thing that catapults you to superstardom <laughs> because that's because that's well, kind of what happens. Yeah, because if that's what you know, you do what you got to do to get to a place where you can do what you want to do. But 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 it's but it's uh, it's it's okay if this is the if this is how it has to be, then that's okay because I've 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 been I've respectfully stepped away from it and 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 denied it. Uh, enough times for enough years to be able to say all right well then then i'll do it so it has what's been coming across your plate since you similar you know some some stuff was similar some stuff that was uh uh you know i'd be very frank vicky too the the the, it's not the the, they're not trying to knock the door down right now like well it's it's still it is still a covid pandemic world but i get get an audition i get auditions for for fun stuff and and uh, and i try really hard i'm still auditioning uh, and uh and, That's uh, that blows my mind completely yeah. that you're still having to do yeah. that. No, I don't think that it. will be no. for much longer. Yeah, I don't mind it. I really don't mind it because because there's there is a there isn't there is something that people don't really talk about, which is the awful experience of being offered a role and then showing up. And when you do what you would like to do with the role, it's the complete opposite of what they need you to do. And then you're sitting in a really uncomfortable relationship. It's like you got married to somebody before you got to know who they were, right? And, right. and that's a really ugly place to be. I've been there once, twice. And so I know really? so I'm okay with having to audition. Uh, there are just certain times when when it's easier for, for I know the part or or this is a smaller part or this is something that I feel like and we talk first before you know I I've, I've been asked to 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 work on something and I've said great can I can we have a conversation first before you know we do it as opposed to uh, yes I'll just do it you know uh, but is but, it all self tape yeah. now or are there any live auditions it's all no, self tape it's self tape most is self tape and then I've had a couple of Zoom uh uh auditions which were <laughs> i auditioned for this fantastic project i really hope it's still being done i, I didn't get hired but it's okay that the uh the 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 zoom meeting was so it was such a technical just 
comedy of errors like Murphy's Law like I I logged myself off right in the middle of the scene and like it's just like all kinds of because I don't know I'm not good with this kind of shit right right so so I, so I had to uh, I had to figure that out but I, I I so yes no I've only done like one or two but they've, they've they're really kind of weird and uncomfortable I'd rather just send a tape or or have a conversation you know with somebody about it but yeah, wow. but anyway, the auditions that have come, some of them have been close to, uh, you know, or, or at least in the in the color palette, if you will. So um, how do you feel now about doing more of that? I, I don't I, I'm not charmed by it at all. That's what I figured you were going <laughs> to yeah. say. Yeah. yeah, I'm not charmed by it at all. I think this is a this is a beautiful character who's just been. Uh, 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 fortunately, with the writing and the producing and the directing and all elements and parts together, there's we we as a team have crafted a pretty beautiful piece of art. And so, I, piece I kinda, of art, right? And I just kind of want to like, I just want to leave it there. Like, I don't want to, and 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 you could, it could be diluted a little if all of a sudden the next. Okay, um, but Felix, it's a pan, it's still a pandemic. It, it's still hard to get work. Yeah. Are you going to turn down? Or, um, you... I'm not going to. I, I I will turn down something that's very close to this character. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't been I, am, I, I imagine you're going to get offered more of those kind those of kind things. Of but things, yeah. sure. and that's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. There's a you know there's a uh you. It, if 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 a, if a, if if a guy opens up a pizza shop and he makes really good pizza, people are gonna want him to keep making pizza because <laughs> yeah. they like it. They don't want they don't, him to make egg rolls. They don't want him to start want making it. egg rolls. They don't want him to start making <laughs> salads and you know veggie lasagna. No, they the guy's pizza is great. Keep making my being making that pizza. So I get that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, I I just I just again this I can't shake this idea that that this character is just he's he's right there uh, and I have this image of him just sort of sitting in this beautiful glass display case and just leaving him there. So I just I, love that. Okay, that. so the things that you've done since, like you've done yeah. the rookie, you've done Charmed. Yeah. Complete. What kind of characters have you played in so, those? So Charmed, I'm a I'm an archaeologist slash like artifact chaser who's the father <laughs> of three daughters of two girls. Uh, two two of the three uh, Charmed sisters mm -hmm. are 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 my children, and I've raised them. And and he's funny and wears weird spectacle glasses and 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 runs around chasing ghosts and complete opposite wow uh yeah and matt garza on on the rookie is he's a 20-year veteran of the fbi who who's by the books and he's no nonsense and it's it's very different very different <laughs> although my friends chide me and they say like we see you in all of the characters so don't, <laughs> don't try and hide that <laughs> but but uh but yeah, but no, I, it was the i i was lucky enough to to get uh, the rookie, the character uh, uh, of Matthew Garza on the rookie. I was lucky enough for that to come my way when that's what I was looking was the, the furthest from the, the, you know, get that pendulum to swing in the complete opposite direction, you know? How, yeah. All right. So yeah. let's go back in time for people who don't know how you came to this place. And I don't, I, I assume that people watch Ozark and can see I don't know if they can see what I've seen because I've seen you do it live uh, mm. the cost of living, uh, yeah. both the Pulitzer Prize winner that you did in the theater on six days, I believe, notice. Did you? Yeah, really I, I 10 days to prepare. Yeah, they they had they, they looked to replace the actor. The, uh, I replaced an actor 10 days before opening. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to put up a link to the piece, the monologue that you did in my living room from that play where I was in an audience with, I, Candy Clark took me to that show and there were, I don't know, 50 people, 75, I don't know, hundred people in the audience. And I was sure that you were doing that monologue to me. And so was Candy and the guy sitting with me over here and the woman sitting over there and the person sitting down there, everybody in the audience was convinced that you were doing it straight to them which is a gift beyond very compare but speech. yeah it's a very intimate speech and it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's a actually a very beautiful way to open a story <sighs> uh, to just see a man by himself sitting at the bar tell him try to tell you his story of what what his life has been like and uh and and it was it was a lot of fun it was scary 
as all hell because that's that's a that's a pretty uh, it's a mouthful of a speech, but 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 also uh, the, the 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 emotional uh, acrobatics required were were also uh, difficult to achieve in a ten day process. But I, I just went for it. I didn't think I didn't think too much about it. I just went for it. I'm, I've told you this many times before, mm. but I really mean it. I've I've seen quite a bit of theater. I've taught acting. I've been an actor. I have never been more more moved. I've been moved. I've never, I've never had an experience quite like that in the theater. And I thank you still because it stays with me, and I can recall it and feel it and feel you. I ran into her. I ran into her. Thank you, thank you. That's very sweet of you. I ran into her on the street the other day in New York. She's Candy? on the phone. Uh, uh, no, uh, 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 the playwright. The playwright. Oh. Uh, you have to tell me her name. Ka no, not, not Ka Kathy. Kathy was the actress. Um, Martina Majok. Martina Majok. Wow. She's on the phone and we're crossing the street and I see her and I just kind of put myself in her eye, uh, line of vision. And I go like this and she screams into her phone. She's like, it's Felix Solis. It's Felix Solis. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm saying hello. And I kept walking. She's like, it's Felix. And I was like, yeah, it's me. We know each other. I did your play. Like, hi. Anyway, she's very, she's very sweet. And then she, and then she went on. I still think it really needs to be a film and you need to do it. That's, yeah, I've I'm, said that I, all along. Uh, I'm sure there, I'm sure there are people who have, who have kept an eye on that, uh, who are keeping an eye on that, who may have already maybe put it in a, in a docket, if you will. Or whatever. I hope so. So do. Felix, tell everybody how you came to, I mean, you're such a passionate, and you are a craftsman. You are a craftsman. You are an artist. How, how did you come to this? How was, was this, were you a kid? Did you have heroes? What, why did you I, want to become an well, actor? Yeah, I mean, my heroes, my heroes were my mother and my father and, and mm. remain. So, but, 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 but the, but uh, my parents worked a lot of jobs. My dad was a plumber, carpenter, electrician. Uh, he's still alive. He's still with us. My mother was a seamstress. She also mopped and they were superintendents of buildings throughout Greenwich Village and Chelsea and the, and the New York City area. And so uh, I, I grew up with no babysitter action. So like then I, they were, they put me in an after school program just to keep me there for the last three or four hours of their third job shift of that day. Right. And, and it happened to just be creative. It was, I grew up in Greenwich Village. So it was a, it was a theater games and improv after school program where we just played and played and, uh, uh, to to her credit, my mother was like, "This is an expressive kid. Let's let's you know put let's uh, water that plant. Let's water that plant. Let's water that plant." So she just kept pushing me to go go. You want to keep doing it? You can do it. It's great. And I would just kept pushing, pushing, and I didn't even I didn't even uh, I, I I didn't grow. I wasn't like a, and and I, I don't want to discredit anyone who has done this because I think it's actually beautiful. But I didn't. I wasn't a kid who was like, when I grow up, I want to be an actor. I wasn't. I just, I was the kid who said, when I grow up, I don't want to disappoint my parents, <laughs> wow. but, but, but it wasn't, I've never been, a, I've never been somebody, I, I, I enjoy doing it. People, people were having beautiful responses to it. Uh, and, and, uh, and then I started getting paid for it. And, and I okay. Thought, so how did that happen? I, you went to, you went, no, you got accepted to LaGuardia. You didn't go to LaGuardia. I didn't, it was too far. I you didn't go because you would have had to take. A couple I would have of to trains. take. The, I take yeah, I had to take two <laughs> trains. I would run up on 15th Street. LaGuardia's on 60 on 68th Street, I think, or so right by Lincoln Center. I was like, that's too far for me. I went to I went to the junior high school on 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 my my junior high school was on 17th Street and my high school was on 19th Street and I grew up on 15th Street. If that's not lazy, I don't know what is. But 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 yeah yeah yeah. No, I said yeah, I just want to hurry up and go home. I'm such a mama's boy, turn to be with my mom as much as I care but like yeah I was like no that's just why why am I going all the way over there when I can go to school right here this, there's a school right here so so I did it but but uh but yeah but no I just I just kept doing you know this stuff in school and and and, and so how did you get how did you segue to become a professional actor how did you get paid to do it I, I know you started in theater a friend, yeah, I started doing uh, doing a lot of theater on my own, but 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 when I did my, you know, like say, how'd you get your SAG card, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. So a, a friend of mine, cool. a friend of mine went to an audition for a TV show, mm -hmm. and told the casting director that he didn't think he was right for the part, but he did know who was. What? 
And he people don't do number. that. Wow. He gave them my number and I got a call and I had to scramble to find an agent to, to negotiate because they said they liked me and they wanted me to, they wanted to hire me, but I had, didn't have an agent. So I called, uh, I called that guy back and I said, who's your agent? Can he represent me? Is that okay? And then we did. And that's how I got my first agent because a friend of mine said, uh, I'm not right for this part. I don't think I'm right for it, but he, he is. And, and I got the job and that was my first television gig. So, so true, true story. And so, and so wow. I started, I started doing that. And then I stuck with them for, for as long as I could, uh, as far as an agency. And then they kind of closed shop on the agency. So I moved to another one and just started, started building there, but all the while doing regional theater. That was where I had really. Okay. So yeah. that's where you, okay. And I know that you were in a company with Felix, with Seymour Philip Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, yeah. He's he's the he's a, he's Laura Linney and I's mutual friend. Uh, uh, who we share we share in, in, in passion and remembrance and grief with. And and uh yes, yeah, he he ran, he he was made a artistic director of the theater company alongside another fantastic actor whose name is John Ortiz. Uh and this was uh, the labyrinth. This was the Labyrinth Theater Company in New York City. Yeah, but before I had gotten there, I was doing regional theater. As a kid, I was doing regional theater. I was doing shows at the Dallas Theater Center, uh, Merrimack Rep in Lowell, Massachusetts. And are you doing this right out of high school? When is this, yeah, what's the time yeah. frame? Uh -huh. It was right out of high school. And and and, uh, and then I started to try to go to school, to college, and it didn't, it didn't work. I don't know, I couldn't, I wasn't good at the, I wasn't good at the being a student of art. Mm. Uh, but you are such a student of art in your own fashion. Yeah, you I'm, are. A student, I'm a student of life. And, mm. and that, that becomes my art. But it was I was having trouble when I was being told that, okay, so there's this book that was written by this woman who tells you how to pronounce your consonants correctly and you speak with distinction and you do. And I couldn't, it was something that I just was having a, I don't want to call it a rebellious attitude toward it, but it just felt like I was being, stripped of who I am naturally right and and mm. so and so I don't I, and 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 because how, how's your mom how are your parents in this and you not going to college and, and you pursuing the regional theater they, are they supporting uh, you through all this they, yeah they said well we, you're not happy why you, you, you're not happy so why would you be doing something that doesn't make you happy like that, wow. was, that was my mom's attitude. Like, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want a, a sad son in my house right now. <laughs> Who needs that? What wow. makes you happy? I want to, you know, I want to do this and uh, let's travel. Okay, go, go to Dallas and do that play or go to, uh, you know, uh, Wisconsin or go and do whatever in San Francisco and all these places in Washington, D.C. I did a, a ton of shows at Arena Stage. She's like, go, do the thing that makes you happy. So like, how long were you doing regional theater? How long was this going on that you were doing was, that? Yeah, I was doing it for, yeah, for uh, a good, a good, I'd say a good 10 years. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, and then all the while, you know, grabbing that one, that one day where I walk in and I'm like the, the dad who's trying to get the lawyer to help out his son and, you know, please save my son kind of character. And then I do that for a day or two on TV, Law and Order. Criminal Intent and all those other great shows that were on New York uh, that, that just kept all of us in New York employed. Thanks was NYPD it. Blue a New York show? Did you? Yeah. I yeah, that was a, a New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although we shot that in Los Angeles. That was actually one of the mm -hmm. first jobs that we did the exteriors in New York. And then mm -hmm. and then we went and did all the interiors in, in L.A. But um, but which was exciting for me, too, because there I was traveling. I was getting on a plane to go to Los Angeles, to go to Hollywood, to do TV. So but, so, but and then know, how did you make that move to come to Los Hollywood. Angeles? I made that move. I was hired to do a show called Colony. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great. It's an alien overtake kind of show that was on. Uh, TNT maybe TNT I'm not sure anyway and I was hired and I was uh, under I from what I understood I was supposed to be in six episodes I showed up I was only in three and and then but I had paid for six episodes worth of rent <laughs> so I was like well I'm not doing the show anymore but I'm still here I might as well stick it out and see 
what happens. And, uh, uh, you know, six and a half, seven years later, I'm leaving there because COVID. So, so, so I, I, I went to LA with a job, which was something that I always really, you taught. did a lot of series. You did the good wife made in Jersey, you, uh, uh the family, York. you did 10 days All in the Valley. York. Yeah. You yeah. had, a, you had lots I of, was, yeah, I was chunky moving. seal team. You had a mm-hmm. lot of chunky, those built, yeah, those built upon themselves. Each one was, uh, again, uh, I, yes, each one built upon itself, where, where like the last job was this big and then the next one got a little bit bigger and then it was good and then trusted and then you keep going and going and going. But, but, uh, but, but, but yeah, that was the initial job, was the, was the one that took me to LA, was, was a, a show called Colony. And then, uh, and then I was like, all right, well, let me see, let me stick it out and see what happens. And I start getting work and getting more work in different kinds of parts. So there wasn't always the procedural, you know, in New York, it was the procedural. That was what you had to feed off of as an actor growing mm-hmm. up in, in, the, in the city. You had those, uh, at least for me. And then, uh, and then in LA, it was a little bit different. I was like, oh, wait, I'm auditioning for, you know, a, a doctor or I'm auditioning for a, a dad or whatever. So, so, so it changed, but, but yeah, LA, LA was, uh, LA was, it was different. I heard you talk about um, a conversation you had with Philip Seymour Hoffman. He was directing a play that he wanted you to be in and your agent or manager didn't want you to do it because they wanted you to be available. Can you tell that story? Because that's a yeah, really incredible absolutely. story. It was a production of, a, it was a, production of uh, a play called Our Lady of 121st Street that was written by a fantastic Pulitzer Prize winning playwright named Stephen Adley Gyrgis, member of our theater company. Uh, partially the reason why I became a member of the theater company. He saw me and stuff wow. and liked me and he wanted me and, and stuff. And one of the things was this production of Our Lady of 121st Street, which is in a nutshell, it's a story of Sister Rose, who was a nun in the neighborhood who helped raise all of the kids who grew up in the neighborhood. And she's found, uh, she's gone missing. And, uh, and so it brings all the kids who she was, she helped raise and help make into great people come back to the neighborhood to help find her. And I play a, a detective who's been hired to find out what happened to her and happens to also have been raised by her as well. So I'm a kid from the neighborhood who comes back. Fantastic play. And, uh, and, and, uh, and so I was doing, we did a small production of it in a smaller theater that we had all sort of been renting for the, or in residence for, and then mm-hmm. people loved it enough. They were going to give it a commercial production. Come to everyone's ready. Everyone's on board. Everyone signed on to do the commercial run of the show. Mm-hmm. I'm the last one to, uh, uh, sign on because I was, had a conversation with my agent at the time, not my manager who I am with now, but my agent at the time who believed that I should not do the play and, and leave myself available for pilot season to try and mm-hmm. get a television show. So I was hemming and hawing, hemming and hawing. And then I get a call and it's Phil. And he said, he asked me, he says, what's going on, Felix? You're the only one. We want to start rehearsals. We should be starting rehearsals right now. <laughs> you understand what's going on? He called me Flex. Is flex. I don't. I don't understand what's going on. And then I said, No, you know, I'm just thinking. Should I do uh, uh, pilot season? Or should I leave myself available? And if I do the show, then he said, well, What do you What do you want to do? I said, How do What do you mean? He said, what, what do you want to do? I said, I want to. You know, I want to act. I want to act. And he said, Well, you're given an opportunity right now to act. You're being given an opportunity to act. So, so act. Why are you gonna hang on to potential work? You've been given a job right now. What do you wanna do? I wanna act, then fucking act, because here it is. Wow. And I said, yes, the next, and it changed my career. It was one of the, one of the it was literally the best play of the year, that year, that production, uh, it, it, it garnered every single actor in that cast a, a, a career and, wow. uh, and, and 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 he yeah that was a conversation i had with him on the phone <laughs> i heard uh, al pacino reached out to you after seeing that he did he sent me a he sent me a note saying that uh, uh, you were fantastic i loved you and and 
And I was like, oh shit, you were, you're in. <laughs> you were in the audience. <laughs> that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and then I went on to do some stuff with him because we did, uh, you know, he'd always do these wonderful never ending workshops at, at, at the actor studio. And one of them mm-hmm. was a, a production of, uh, it wasn't even called a production, it was called The Reading of Salome, the, the Oscar Wilde version of Salome. And I was, I, I played uh, the page to Herodias and it was just a six, seven month process of just coming together and just reading the play and trying different things all day, every day. Uh, and it was really, really enjoyable. But yeah, he was, he, he sent me a note. He sent me a card saying, thank you for your performance. It was really beautiful. And, and it was pretty cool. So what was that like to work with, with Al? I, I got to spend an hour with Al. Al's an intense yeah oh, fucker. he's a, no, he's amazing he's straight, yeah no he's straight uh uh what do you call it uh muse he's a straight vessel there's a this is a, he's a straight vessel of art uh to the point where I, there's times when i i have i have felt like up to the point of 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 human uncomfortability you know the inability to just be normal Wow. It's a very fascinating thing uh, uh, to watch and, and, and experience. And he was very sweet, very shy, really, really shy. Like not like too, at least from my personal mm-hmm. experience, never been somebody who's like, let's all go out and have dinner or whatever. <laughs> it's like, no, he's very like, hi and see you later. I'm off. And, you know, that kind of thing, which was mm-hmm. always interesting to see somebody who's known for the complete opposite for these explosive and, and, and incredibly uh, larger than life type roles that he's uh, he's made memorable. So 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 it was kind of cool. But it, but but it was at the same time I was like, wow, this is guy. This is like a, again, he's not who you see. He's somebody else. He's not. He's not. He's not who you see on screen. He's mm-hmm. he's a different person. You know. Uh, As are you. Yeah. So um, how so. Are you still would would you still do theater? Do Philip's words still ring in your head? Would you do you still do theater? All right. How did you how did the cost of living happen? Because you were all, you were doing a lot of TV at that time. I was in I was in Puerto Rico doing SEAL Team, and and my friend Sochi Romero, who was in the production as well, mm-hmm. uh, called me in Puerto Rico and said, "Hey, they're about to let this guy go. Do you want to do this play? I think he'd be great in it. I'll I'll recommend that they call you and ask you to do the play." But wait a minute, you're doing SEAL Team. Yeah. Like you're so, doing. Right. Which is why I ended up only having 10 days because I had to finish SEAL Team to oh. then go into this thing. Uh, and then I finished it and, and went in. But she called me. She called me. She said, hey, they're there. She was so fantastic in it as oh. well. So that cast was so, was just. It was ama- only four characters in yeah, this play. Four, oh. four handers. And she was just beautiful. I was so, so, so honored to share the stage with her, but, and she's a friend too, which is great. I love her. And, 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 and so, yeah, she called me, she called me from Puerto Rico when I was in Puerto Rico and she said, well, they're doing this. And you want to, I was like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, I didn't even think I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I dove in. Uh, but, uh, but it's a beautiful play, you know, but I, and I also, I, I also know the guy, like we've talked about this big, I know this guy. And not very many people who go to see theater get a chance to see this guy on stage. Mm-hmm. This guy is an everydayer, man. This guy is somebody who's just, he, he's a, he just is, he's normal as fuck and, and, and as complex and as broken as any human being that we will ever encounter. And when do we rarely, we rarely get a chance to see that kind of person on stage. That's so true. Right? He's just, he's a, he's just an everydayer. He's the kind of, he's the, which is why I think the play is so beautifully, it, it, it launches itself so beautifully with that speech. Because that happens. How many times, and it's funny because I've had this conversation with other people when we've been sharing stories about, mm-hmm. about Ozark, for example. Mm-hmm. I said, one of the things that is, has been fascinating for me to do is and contribute to is to create this guy. You're at an airport. Mm-hmm. You got two hour layover. You go to the cafe or the bar or whatever. And you're sitting at the bar and you meet this guy. He tells you his name. He tells you he's from Mexico. You have a conversation. What do you do? I have my own business. Oh, great. Yeah, you have a family. I do. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, you're from Puerto Rico. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's wonderful. What do you do? And you have this wonderful conversation while you're waiting for the plane to go. 
Then you get on the plane. And then a week later, you're sitting there, you're watching the news and you see that very same guy being arrested for being the head of a drug cartel. Right? And you're like, <laughs> that was the most, that was the nicest guy I've ever. You see what I'm saying? That's the human, that's the human necessity for the characters that I, that I, that I, that I create. That me, yeah, that make me want to act. It just make me these kinds of, so Eddie is like that. Eddie Torres is a guy who's just, he's an everydayer who just, you have a sweet time with him. He's a little sad. He must have some kind of, you know, he must have had a tough time in his life or whatever. And you feel for him. So you kind of are patient with him at the bar and whatever. And you, but then it turns out he's this guy who's got this hard experience that he has to go through that you're like, you're such a sweetheart, the guy. That kind of that that's what that's what kind of jazzed me about Eddie Torres and in the cost of living was that he's just this he's a really sweet guy who just has a lot that, that life has just been like boom, boom, boom. We don't see those guys on stage much. We don't. We walk past them on the street. We say excuse me as we're getting into an elevator with them, but we don't see them on stage. And so that that to me was like the the for me that was the joy of playing that character was that I get to show people who don't necessarily really see this guy. He's not seen. These characters aren't seen in real life. So it was beautiful to put them on stage so that people could see them, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, life changing to watch also and as I said, has stayed with me um, all these all this time. So I know that you and Lisa have a, um, a film production company and you've yeah. done a award, Tribeca Film, you did a Tribeca, your first yeah. film, right? Tribeca yeah, Film. Yeah, are, are you guys still creating yeah. art? Yeah, yeah, we totally are. We, we, uh, the, the production company is called Subway Token Films. Uh, we named it after the, again, the everydayer. So like the only kind, the kind of people you see on the subway, those are the kind of people we want to write about and talk about and, 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 and make art about. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, we've been doing it, you know, we get busy and, and, and life happens. And so we have to be careful not to make sure that we don't just forget it or it falls a little bit of the wayside from time to time. So we do have to hunker down sometimes and be like, okay, stop everything, shut everything off. Let's sit down and do subway token films for a couple hours. Like you know, you got to focus on that kind of stuff. Right. And uh, and we have and we've been doing it. We got we just got uh, we just sat down with each other a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, and said and said we figured out our next story, and so we're so we're kind of getting juiced up again to write another one. But but the but the thing that that was uh, important for me when when we started it was that I. I, I took a, the small amount of money I started making and, uh, and, and, and said, I'm not going to buy a fancy car. I'm not going to buy a fancy shoe. Like, I'm not going to get Air Jordans. I'm not going to do that with this. What can I do with this money that I have right now? It may not be here forever, mm -hmm. but what can I do with it that will, that will allow it to last as long as it possibly can? And that's going to be, let's buy some film equipment. Let's buy some, a film package. Let's, let's buy the equipment we need so that we can make our own movies. That's kind of how it really started. It started with that coinciding the fact that Lisa was on was asked by her parents to go to Chile to to the vineyard where she where her parents uh, grew up and uh, and asked her to to help them clean out the property and all of that and <clears throat> excuse me I uh, I said well if we're gonna go and do this we let's we might as well bring the camera equipment with us and let's just make a movie so we did you know just sort of serendipitously got together with that. And, and so we had like a beautiful backdrop for the film, which was this vineyard in Chile. And, uh, and then we just wrote the story uh, and, and put it together. But, but yeah, but it's a, it's a production company that allows, it, it's, it sets itself as a reminder too, to like, no matter how busy life gets and no matter how other things are, there's still a place where we can just, there's still a gym where we can go to work out that we've built and we have to make sure that we, that we actually use it, you know? But yeah, but it's exciting to see it still still around and still in existence and still sort of begging for more art. So yeah. and so what's on your plate right now, Felix? What what uh, what has your attention right now? I mm -hmm. uh, just finished. Uh, let's see, I just finished the rookie. So I finished this backdoor pilot spinoff that we're hoping will go. And if it does, that'll be exciting. It'll bring me back to Los Angeles for work, which will be fun to, to be there and working uh which is great so it's a spin-off of the show rookie the rookie on abc and then uh and then i i just recently 
auditioned and I think I'm about to get asked to do this great new TV show for Apple TV called City on Fire, uh, which it revolves around this, um, it revolves around a murder case where a young woman is found murdered in Central Park. And as they investigate the murder and what happened, it, it she's tied into a lot of other interesting things in the counterculture of New York City and, and the hierarchy and the sort of upper, upper west side, like, a penthouse lifestyle of New York and so on and so forth. And, and, I, and I'd be playing uh, this wonderful uh, sort of creative gallerist who, who, who uh, represents an artist. And so he's very, uh, he's very boisterous and outward and, and, uh, and uh, very honest and bold. So I kind of dig him, I kind of dig that. So I'm hoping that it, it works. Um, and, then, and then again, like I said, like Lisa and I just came up with this great idea uh, my dentist of all people tells me this fascinating story. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I'm gonna use, I said, you just gave me my next short film. And he said, no, you should, you should use it. He's a wonderful dentist. He's a sweetheart. Dad, but doesn't friend. everybody you meet say, I've got an idea for you. If you just did my life, but your dentist really, you're going to do it. That's he crazy. actually told me this really beautiful, beautiful story. And, and I was like, it's an amazing story. So I said to him, I said, you know, you just told me a story that I'm going to, Steal! I'm stealing it from you. I'm taking it from you. I want you to be. I want to be very upfront with you about it. And he was like, "Yes, you should. It's a great story. He's a wonderful, wonderful guy. He's from. Uh, he's from. Where is he from? I mean, it's not Polish. But he's from part that part of the world, and then it's just just full of fun stories. And so anyway, so it'll be great because then I we have the story. That's what was one I was just talking about, and we'll start working on it. You know, and start putting together some kind of script or something for it. And then I'm hanging out with my dog, you know, I love him so much. Jackie and, Robinson. Is, so, yeah. he, is he in the room? So Jack McGee, speaking of Jackie, Jack McGee yeah. is saying hello. Uh, Co-star hey, from the hey, International hey. Jack. Jack. I love Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I saw him. He was on. He was on. You guys were talking. I watched. I love Jack. Jack is yeah, the yeah. best. He's fabulous. Yes. And, and and so far, he's come back and watched every show since and said, that was my co-star in this. That was Jack's been in everything. He's <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. So, Felix, we're going to we're we're all getting ready including you to sit down on friday night and uh hunker down with the popcorn and ozark i'm so excited how many are left how many episodes seven. are there seven there se so that's like that's like an an all-nighter that's an all-nighter binge <laughs> i pitched i pitched nobody listened i scream i i pitched this yes. idea when we were doing this fourth season okay i just started to just say hey listen what if we completely flipped the script on everyone and we gave them one episode a week? Oh, I would have killed you. I would have. I, I hate those shows. I hate those shows that I, I can't. Wait for I can't, HBO does it. That way. I <laughs> they looked at me. They looked at me. They're like, what are you, a dinosaur? <laughs> what are you? And I was like, what? This guy's how we used to watch TV. You watched oh. one episode, you had to wait till the next week to oh. watch the next one. I got, that's where I came from. But anyway, so they were like, what do you know? <laughs> I was saying, all right, whatever. But yes, so yes. But 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 I have had conversations with people who have said that when the when they come out, they they are going to they're gonna drip feed it, like they're gonna take their time through it as opposed which that's how I watch my shows. I'm not gonna just, watch, I'm not gonna pull an all-nighter. I'm gonna, no. I'm, gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna savor it. Yeah. You spread them out. I did that recently, two nights ago. I watched, I'd never watched it. I, 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 I worked with the guy and I love him so much. His name's Richard Price. He's a fantastic writer. I don't know if you know Richard Price, but he's written such beautiful work, both novels, films, television. He, he wrote this thing with this guy called The Night Of. I love The Night Of. I had of. never seen it. Oh, I had never seen John it. John Turturro, it is so brilliant. I had never seen it and I... And I started, I was like, I, I need to watch something. I feel like just being home and watch. Oh. I watched the whole thing <laughs> in one sitting. It was like, I want to say it was maybe 4.30 in the morning when I turned the TV up. I, and I was like, I've, I've never done that. I'm not, the, I, I will watch. I'm like, cool, all right. Tomorrow, the next day, I'll watch the next episode. You know how like the next episode automatically starts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just literally sat there the whole time like this and watched all eight episodes of that show. It was 
Oh, and such an amazing show. I, I could actually show. watch it. It's so amazing. And it was so and beautiful I, to watch too because it's all New York actors. Are and who, what's, actors. who's the guy? He, Rabbi. Riz, oh, Riz Ahmed. He, yeah, and he was just in the drum. Oh, okay. We, yeah, we, no, I, he, I know. He's losing his hearing. He's deaf in a film that came out uh, like yeah, two yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah. And he's a per- Absolutely. Anyway, he's Riz brilliant. Ahmed was ridiculous. And John Torturo. Oh, my God. Just, I mean, Bill Camp. And I know Bill Camp from children's theater that we did together in New wow. York at the 52nd Street Project. We would volunteer and play characters for these young kids who wrote these plays from the inner cities of the projects of 52nd Street and Hell's Kitchen. Like, I've known him for that. And I just wow. watched him play that role. It was so good. They're so good. They're all so re- Anyway, so so I know the feel, but that's the only time I've actually binged, Vicky. Every other time I've been, I've drip, I've drip feed or fed or whatever. I've, um, I've- why am I forgetting like the most famous? Oh my God. I am just, oh my God. The dr- Oh my God. I can't think of what it's called. It's like the most famous series that has ever been other than the Sopranos about the, 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 the drugs. Oh my God. And I'm forgetting the actor's name because this, I'm having a brain for it. Oh, come oh on. yeah, Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad. I I I came late to Breaking Bad after huh? everybody watched it. I didn't get out of I didn't get out of bed for five days. My kids thought I was dying. I just I just I could not turn it off. I would watch all yeah. night. I could not turn that off. I try to do. I mean, I try to. It's funny because it sounds it's going to sound like I'm contradicting myself now. But I try to. I try not to start watching shows that are still in progress. So that you can binge them. <laughs> so I can. So so people say, yeah, so you can binge them. But but also for me, I don't I didn't I just didn't like that there was not. But so it sounds like I'm contradicting myself. But it was something there's something about being able to choose when to do it. That's to know that it's there. <laughs> you can do it if you want to. So. All right. So I'm doing that. I just went back. I'm watching Barry from the beginning. Have you watched Barry? Great show. With- yeah. My buddy Chris McGarry is on that show. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great show. Great show. So oh, three God. came Henry out. So Winkler. I've just gone back. And Bill Hader, so, actually, yeah. not Jack McGee. Um, Fred Melamed was just telling me that he thinks Bill Hader is going to be one of the most important directors of his generation. Probably. He's probably. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're coming yeah. up on Friday. So yeah. are you happy with, I know that you don't know how the show ends, but you know sure. what happens to Omar. Are yeah. you happy with where Omar, I think you told us this at the beginning, are yeah. you okay with what happens with Omar? I think if you, yeah, I think if you, I think if you like, yeah, I think if you've liked what you've seen, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna like it. Now he's, you know, there's people, there's Team Omar, and then there's Anti Omar. I've, I've heard whispers <laughs> and people being like, that guy's the worst character, and I've heard people go, that's the best character. We love him, and so some people may be happy how how his characters arc is completed and some people some people will not some people will will have it but i think that's i think that's going to be speaking of the sopranos right like mm-hmm. that was okay so the door opens in the diner and we go to blackout they almost started a riot in New York, when I was watching that show and I was in New York, I was up in Washington Heights and I started hearing people screaming out the windows and say, something's going on. What's going on? Like, it, and we were all that we were all watching in real time because it was once a week. So we had our once a week. Yeah, it was once a week and we were watching real time. There were people who still who there. I, I've had conversations with people about it because of the Ozark and, and people bringing up the Sopranos comparison and all of that. I've had conversations with people who were like, I still don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I still like right. They're just like they're traumatized. Like they're like re- like a really bad breakup, right? But I, even I, they don't know. I've had Vincent Pastor on. I am friends with Michael Imperioli. Yeah, yeah. You know they'll still they change their minds on how it ended. Still, yeah. all these years later. Yeah, yeah. And so and so, but so so the so the fascinating thing for me is that is that again I think I think Jason Bateman put it well. He he, he really hit the nail on the head he said if you've liked the way the show has gone up till now you'll like the way it ends and has it ended to the extent that there's absolutely no way it could ever come back i think if you've liked 
the show up to this point <laughs> you're gonna like the way it ends <laughs> okay i want because i want more i don't want to hear it i don't want to watch that last episode and say, no, it's, like, oh. yeah, it's still there we can always rewind and watch it again so yeah. you can do that to go back I, and revisit. yes but, I, but I guess i know it's not like the usual suspects where like it's spoiled once you know the ending or whatever but but it but it's but it's i think it's uh I really, I, 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 I honestly, if, if, if it, if it goes the way it's been going, which is how people have liked it, I, I think, I think you'll be all right. Well, I absolutely can't wait. I am so thrilled that you took the time to do this with me, Felix. I adore you. I adore you as, as an artist, as, but more as a person. You're just, you're just a gem. Appreciate an it. absolute gem. Thank you so much for, for taking the time. I've enjoyed it so much again, of course. Of course. And I can't wait to, to see you on Friday and everything that you're going to do thereafter. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys like it.